Downhill from here is a report from the front line of a cutting edge sport from our own Bill Geist. What do you have when you combine a shovel, a mountain, and a maniac? Find out later on Sunday morning at the World Downhill Shovel Racing Championships from Angel Fire, New Mexico. Now, people who think shovels are only made for picking stuff up and hauling it away obviously haven't seen shovel racing. 25 years ago, sledding enthusiasts slid down a mountain riding on a shovel. Today, the super modified shovel races are part soapbox derby and part drag race. Hey, it certainly beats a trash can lid. You'll see what I mean. Check it out. When it comes to wintertime slope sliding, we've got the inside scoop. It's called shovel racing. Oh my lord! Shovel racing used to be, well, just that. But saddling up to a streaking spade got old. And competitors decided to add a few bells and whistles to their scrap iron ponies. To do that means slapping on a few skis, borrowing the odd aircraft part or two, soldering on a roll bar, and voila! A greased aluminum platter is turned into a mountainside missile. It's unique, it's different. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else like it anywhere in the world. And if you look carefully, you'll still find a shovel blade within 12 inches of the driver's seat and touching the snow. Without it, there's no racing. Where else are you going to find a 1,000-foot course that will bring you up to speeds of 80, maybe 90, maybe someday over 100 miles an hour? These dueling diggers have turned a lowly garden tool into a hillside hero. This is where the action is. This is where you can see the, the death-defying crashes, the amazing finishes. I mean, you wouldn't believe they're pushing 80, 85 miles an hour. Flying down the hill, just hoping that they don't get sideways. That's the end. It's extreme. What these shovel demons need is speed. The main goal at this point from now on is we want to go faster, faster, faster. Ouch! New Mexico's Angel Fire Mountain is home to the World Shovel Racing Championships. Competitors on this 1,000-foot course may look like they're climbing into IndyCar cockpits, but they remain true to their sport. Just like the original spade sleds, these 500-pound modified shovels are fueled by a mix of gravity and high-octane lunacy. Yeah. Designing sleds that torpedo down the course has proved to be the easy part. Unfortunately, stopping is the hard part. It hasn't been quite as simple to improve on steering and braking. So for those who find themselves in an unstoppable situation, the net is the end of the line. If we could just manage to get down the hill without running into something, I'd feel like we won, no matter how fast we got. He does have a start, a good straight line. Sometimes shovel pilots manage to keep it straight long enough to blast across the finish line at record speed. But just as often, they find themselves hurtling through the air in an out of control crack up. It happened all so fast that all I did was try to hang on and not let any parts of my body hang out. Injuries aside, shovel racers keep coming back for more. They really dig the ride. Kyle has always had problems stopping. About six years ago, I ended up in the hospital with a punctured lung and I crushed my rib cage over here. But I got third place. Our philosophy of life is that we're not spectators, that the only way that you can really experience life to the max is to experience the thrill of coming as close to the edge as you can without falling off. Beautiful. Don't scoff at shovel racing. It's even too extreme for the X Games. Organizers say it's just too dangerous. Be right back.
Here we are. The old Viper, Sean Sled. Now it's called High Velocity. Last year it was called Bad to the Bone. There's the bad boy itself. See me in confusion, wonder why. Cause you've outdone yourself this time. Talking smack is gonna bite your back And only you will suffer That's a fact, a fact, a fact Well, well I never cause you crazy But I've seen you act a fool But many questions do I raise We all see Yourself in exile now. Splitting all the hairs will get you nowhere. You'll be lucky just to keep your share. Take care, take care, take care. Wow. So are you happy? Are you ready to? It's time to move on. I'm not worried about weight. It's time to move on. I'm not worried about weight. I got that on tape. Okay, the real thing is the only Sorry, thing. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> that we'll build it. Sorry, okay. Kurt. Butch we, ain't doing the bud. Uh, we want bud on our side, but man, I can't drink that shit. <laughs> <laughs> we want anyone on our side who's going to help us. He's reading about shovel racing here. We're in the paper again. Show me. Tell him the kids I view. Show me the paper. All right, so you're pretty stoked. You're loving life. <laughs> He's got the fever. Fever. I feel the need for speed. Yeah. Everyone is welded here in the shop. But that just proves it's truly a group effort here. Oh, by the way, this is Saturday night, and it's uh, almost 10 o'clock. Yeah, and I braved the snow on the ground, it's still snowing. That's right. And I braved the blizzard from hell to get here tonight. Unfortunately I'm gonna have to bed down with Butchie. He wants to be on top. But uh so we're ready almost no. to uh Oh he wants I said you wanted to be on top. That cigarette lit right next to that shit. Come on. Don't worry. Oh yeah, you're pouring that. That's Don't worry. right next to that. Don't worry. Yeah, we were almost blowing up in the gas. Hey, whoa, well, back <laughs> out. Hey, hey. Don't worry, man. It's too late to kill me now, Bush. You won't have Don't another worry. driver. It means you'll have to drive it. <laughs> I just had you busted on camera. This would have been one of those uh, funniest but most horrible uh, home videos. 
Here we are, and the butch goes up the flames. And I get blown backwards. Hey, is that that shit? Oh, you're spraying that shit at me? Yeah, I'm vaporizing it. Now it's gonna explode. You were worried before. Well, great. Let's just spray that right here by the fire. <laughs> you were worried. It was getting worse. <laughs> Monday morning, 3.30, and I guess I gotta go. California kid over there flaming up. Well, here we are. Tuesday. All the racers are here. The camera crews are out there somewhere. Flames on the side. <laughs> All right, here we are with almost everything on it except for a little bit of skin. She's already fast. Okay, we've got Sean Hughes on the hill. Let me uh, loosen this up a little so we can turn. 
This is our course. Oh, come on. All right, so your name is Bill, and you're uh, one of the mountain managers here at, the, at Sandia, right? Yes, I am. What do you think of these crazy shovel racers? Yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. That's it. Yeah? What do you think? One of these days, maybe we'll have one up here, huh? Yeah. Uh, I think we're all too stupid to build one here. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe we'll have a race. Oh, yeah. Maybe we can have a nice uh, preliminary race, practice day, similar to this, but like really set up. And have, we'll call it the Sandia Classic. What do you think? Perfect. All right. Perfect. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> All right. Now we got Dawn Sled here. The other one's over there. My little teeny baby. Look at my little baby. Yeah, let's button me up so you're not so cold. Doesn't look like much from here. Bull Sled. And the entire crew of folks. And then up the mountain, the California kid is prepping. Um, all you can do is wax and buff and polish the bottom. That's the production. Uh, we have people from uh, 6 to 80 up there riding the production shovel. Then you have uh, basically three <laughs> categories of the modified. Uh, an open-ended sled like this, uh, which is called a light modified, which basically in the rules means if it's under 100 pounds, you have to have an automatic brake. So if I roll off it, it'll deploy and stop the sled by itself. And then my main brake, you have to be able to steer. But if it's under 100 pounds, you don't need a roll cage or anything like that. Is he crazy or just uncommonly committed to his unusual pastime? No, we're not talking about Dan Monahan, but he <laughs> joins us now with tonight's closer look at a unique story. Dan? And it is unique. Four years ago this week, one of New Mexico's strangest sports grabbed national attention. And in the process, the sport's most vocal supporter snapped his spine. Now the wounds are healed and the shovel racer is back. The Viper! He had a sleek new sled named Viper and the shovel racing spirit. Well, it does take a special breed of psycho to do this sport. In January of 1997, John Strader and Viper wrapped on their initial test run. It was a sign of things to come. Two weeks later, ESPN kicked off its Winter Extreme Games, and shovel racing with Strader and company earned a slot on the premiere. Teammate Gail Bowles wiped out spectacularly, but walked away. John Strader wasn't so fortunate. I'm just lucky that, that I didn't get hurt worse. And I'm happy he damaged three vertebrae. That hardly seems lucky unless you see the wreck in slow motion and see his leg flopping helplessly outside the crashing sled. Four years later, Strader's sled racing pals still remember the crash. It was pretty harsh, let's put it that way. Those shovel racers gathered this week at Sandia for the A&E Network, which is putting together a shovel racing show. And John Strader, with his new sled, showed up to return to the sport. You know, I don't think I'm crazy. He admits his back is still stiff, but snow and speed are a powerful drug. It's all about that adrenaline coming straight down the mountain, fast as you can. Um, it's just fun. He's leaning toward naming his new sled Phoenix, as in rising from the ashes. Which definitely I went down in flames, so it's the comeback. <laughs> Go up over there. Toad atop the hill and back aboard a shovel racer, John Strader made a relatively safe, slow return to his sport. Yeah, I now want to go a little higher, a little faster. A nasty spill can break his back, but not his spirit. Now, ESPN dropped shovel racing from its X Games after that initial crash-filled year, but Angel Fire Ski Resort will host shovel racing this weekend as it continues its annual tradition with this most unusual sport. As we were asking, is he crazy? <laughs> well, telling the crash, and also, I mean, when you hear this guy broke his back, what's he doing? Uh, 
back out here. Tell me about that one. <laughs> well, at the X Games, um, when I crashed, I had some pretty severe injuries. I cracked some ribs, my sternum, broke my jaw, uh, knocked some teeth loose, and uh, broke my back in three places. Uh, a lot of people say now that I'm coming back into the sport, I must be crazy. What am I doing? Why am I coming back? Um, you know, I love this sport. Uh, I give everything to this sport. Uh, there was a lot of factors oh, involved in that crash that we've, uh, tried to uh, uh, remedy, but you know, you can't be in this sport and, and be afraid to crash. You've got to be prepared to crash. Um, but for me, it's really, you know, it's weighed heavily on my soul, you know, to be like one of the people who promotes and cares about the sport more than anyone and to not be there racing. For me, it's it's just my own personal gratification to finally be back in the saddle. Do you feel like you are back to where you want to battle uh, well, we'll see after the race. <laughs> are, you, are you worried at all because of your accident? Um, you know, yeah, I, I do worry about it. Uh, you know, I run scenarios through my mind. Um, obviously, the worst danger that I have is if I get off the sled, becoming entangled in it next to the wall. That would be bad. Um, but the steering on Angel Fire's course, the top speed is right hey. about hour. Snow, snow, snow shovel. Snow's too deep. I've got snow all over so Such a 65 on a snow shovel. Pretty extreme. When you're sitting on your butt going 65, it feels like a hundred and sixty-five. Woo! John! You know what, Butch? When I'm Bumping like that, it's hard to keep my thumb on that switch. I was trying to hit it, go, whoa, whoa. It's <laughs> up. Come on, straighter, get on that brake. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Still ahead for us, Bill Geist, off on a slippery slope. From Angel Fire, New Mexico, something a bit different in competitive skiing. By show of hands, how many of you shoveled the snow from your driveway last Saturday? Thank you, John. I bet you didn't know the shovel you used is actually capable of traveling up to 80 miles an hour. In perfect conditions, of course. Ed McDougall tells us about a local shovel racer making a comeback. <laughs> John Strader is your typical winter athlete. He loves being outside in the snow. He just has a different way of getting down the mountain. If I make it down the hill with no crashes, I'll be feeling pretty good. But, uh, you know, anything's possible in shovel racing. John's been shovel racing for 20 years, but it almost ended at the 1997 Winter X Games. Racing in a super modified sled, he broke his jaw, cracked ribs, knocked out teeth, and broke his back in three places. A lot of people say, now that I'm coming back into the sport, I must be crazy. What am I doing? Why am I coming back? Um, you know, I love this sport. This is John's new sled, and when it's all finished, all he'll have to do is name it. The name that he's leaning toward, Phoenix, because after his wreck, his career is rising from the ashes. There was a lot of factors involved in that crash that we've uh, tried to uh, uh, remedy, but you know, you can't be in this sport and, and be afraid to crash. He's somewhat of a shovel racing pioneer, and he has a clear vision of where he wants his sport to end up. I mean, they've got 12 days of curling in next year's Olympics. Why not shovel racing? That's a good point, John. From Sandia Peak Ski Area, Ed McDougall, Fox 2 Sports. <laughs> the annual shovel races in Angel Fire are this Saturday. The rule states the shovel only has to touch the ground. You can build anything around a regular uh, shovel you buy at the store. Thank 
Downhill from here is a report from the front line of a cutting edge sport from our own Bill Geist. What do you have when you combine a shovel, a mountain, and a maniac? Find out later on Sunday morning at the World Downhill Shovel Racing Championships from Angel Fire, New Mexico. My dad was a racer before I was, and that's how I got into the race world. The sensation of speed skiing is like flying out of a plane, but going a lot faster. The terminal velocity is 126 miles per hour, we're exceeding 126 miles per hour. But we're going faster than somebody falling out of a plane. Versus expensive exotic space age fabrics and streamlined wind tunnel testing of bodies and helmets allowed the racers to break the impossible 150 mile an hour barrier. For winter fun, there's nothing like the thrill of skiing or snowboarding. Hi, I'm Ross Anderson. As a professional speed skier, I know the importance of staying in control at 137 miles per hour. Staying in control is important. I'm a full-blooded Native American Indian. I was raised in Durango, Colorado and learned how to ski at Purgatory Resort. And uh, he's the fastest Native American on skis. He's doing 137 miles an hour. Both my tribes are warriors. They're warrior tribes. You have Geronimo for the Apache. You have the Dogmen for the Cheyennes. Uh, both of them were named for warriors of all warriors. And maybe it does go through my blood system. Maybe uh, that's why I don't quit. Maybe that's why I'm so competitive. Hey, babe. Hey, baby. You ready? Ready to rock. We've got the secret concoction. we got Ross Anderson special. Hopefully we'll uh, show some people up here today. I don't know. Half the competition didn't show up. They're still... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Tony, Gail, Kim. They were all, like, peeking out of their window when I was walking up this morning. All like... Like, waving me off, but... I can't believe no one's here, but who's your main, main uh, Who's my competition? Today? Chad's my competition. We got Ross here. Uh, Nick's around here somewhere. Kento can fly. Uh, so those, those uh, I think there's about five or six of us up here, that, and Sam, of course, that are in the morning. I don't know where all the other people went, but there's a lot of people missing. I think Lance is going to go fast. I think Gavilan is going to make it down the hill. I'm going to go up my speed hump, my speed ab here, ready for action. All right. Let me get a side view of that, babe. All right. <laughs> I 
Jim Shovel laying over there on the bed. No fear, no fear. He's a blazing red. Hi guys. Smile. <laughs> Did you find your backpack? Yeah. Okay. Go, oh, baby. Did they wipe to his eyes? He wiped his eyes. He did. Go, Gail. Oh, the scale. I hear you. I hear you. Check it out. It looks like he's got pretty good speed down here at the okay, bottom of the mountain. Point he is at 12 plus. 
which has been constant. Come on, Sean. Pretty, uh... Come on, Sean. Pretty tight. Body position here. He doesn't run yeah. fast. It could be Wex. All right. But he was third in the world uh, last year, and he won the World French Cup Championship. Ross Anderson uh, is sponsored by Lucky Uniforce, Face of Pizza, Durango Mountain Resort. Oh, he's he's got his hand. Professional <laughs> speed skier, Ross Anderson. Ross Anderson, let's see how he can do on the shovel. And so when he comes down, you know, give him a huge hand, I'll tell you. He, uh, he or if you tried. really want to drive him crazy, just turn your back and don't say anything. <laughs> Better yet, moon him. <laughs> uh. Okay, here comes John Strader. He's going to be the 2001 World Shovel Race Champion. 15.92. 15.92. He posted the first point nine and second fastest time of the day. Better yet, moved him. <laughs> hey, Bill, you're an asshole. Okay, here comes John Strader. He's going to be the 2001 World Shovel Race Champion. For a group of adventurous pioneers, it's all downhill from here, or rather there, for it was on a mountaintop that Bill Geist found a group of daredevils who enjoy their thrills in spades. 
Angel Fire, New Mexico. A resort offering every winter sport imaginable and unimaginable. And now people have started showing up with shovels. Here, downhill snow shovelings become something of a sport. This started as a way for ski lift operators to get down the hill. Then things went a little crazy. This month, competitors waxed their shovels and put on shovel racing suits to compete in the World Shovel Racing Championships. You fall off your shovel, get back on it. The only shovel racing event in the world. Featuring shovel racing greats like Bad Chad Denny. Well, I'm here to defend the two-time defending world championship. And there were rookies about to go down a hill for the first time. There's nothing I'd rather do than go 60 miles an hour down the mountain strapped to a shovel. All right, I'm a virgin now. They'll take it easy on me. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Woo! -hoo! And of course, the man they call the shovel meister, the incomparable John Carl Strader. I've been racing snow shovels for 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. Almost shovel racing again. is his life. It's got to be a stock grain scoop shovel. They come in three sizes. This is a 12, that's a medium. And uh, they got a 10 and a 14. I use a 14. It depends on your derriere. But mere shovels were not enough. They expanded the sport to modified shovel racing, some putting thousands of dollars into their machines. Even my light modified probably cost me three grand. Uh, a new pair of skis, speed skis for these things are over $800. Although some don't take it quite so seriously. You must have quite a bit of money in this. Uh, I think 38 bucks. 38 bucks. <laughs> then came the super heavy modified racing shovels, which look like a cross between NASCAR racers and fighter planes go. and go almost 80 miles per hour down the run. They'd shovel your sidewalk in half a second. You sure there's a shovel under there now? Yeah, it, you can see it right here. <laughs> Why do you even bother to have a shovel anymore? Well, it's a shovel racer. You <laughs> gotta have a shovel, you know? I mean, that's where it's all started. Some conduct wind tunnel tests and use advanced space age material. Okay, we're ready. Feeling straight? Months and months of uh, designing and uh, welding and testing and uh, all to get up here for this one little weekend. More than 100 racers, aged six to seniors, compete in the world championships. This is the fastest on the hill today, right here. You know it's getting serious when they bring out the duct tape. The duct tape makes you more aerodynamic. Duct tape and wax seem to be the secrets to winning. Secret sauce. You buff the bottom, you get it all cherry, and then you put whatever kind of wax you want. Some people use car wax, ski wax, Teflon. I've seen people up there with Spam, rubbing Spam. No. Oh, yeah, can ham, baby. Competition begins with the old-fashioned production class, you know, shovels. Chad Bad Chad sets a blistering pace but can't hold off the shovel meister who wins the event in record time. Your 2001 World Shovel Race production champions. Then the shovel meister suits up for the light modified competition. Which he also wins. He is the shovel meister after all, not to mention head of the International Federation of Shovel Racers. Good. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Go. Right on course. All right, looking good. Okay. Good luck and Godspeed. Then the shovels the crowd's been waiting for. One, go. Right on The super heavy modified. No, not good enough. With just hundreds of a second separating them, these pilots go all out. If you're not up here to win, I don't think you should be up here. You, know? you need 1517 to take over first place. 1586 and an incredible crash at the bottom. Luckily, this pilot was not seriously injured. Double checked all our brake, all our gas lines, and we're ready to rock. Three, two, one, go. 
He's got a great run. He's going right down the center of the course. The California kid wins the heavy modified class. And the time, 15.06, the fastest time of the day. And oh yes, there was one more class, the Uniques. And you are? The Three Amigos. The Three Amigos were judged most unique. No one questioned that decision. Lots of sagebrush. What next for this burgeoning sport of shovel racing? I can see us being in the Olympics. They have 12 days of curling in the Olympics. 12 days. I just can't even fathom why, uh, you know, we wouldn't be in there. The Shovelmeister does have a point. crash was frightening, but it didn't scare Strader from his sport. This weekend, he made his return to the annual races in Angel Fire, and he won. Strader sees the speed as in a shovel. Most people would never look at this thing and think of it as a vehicle, you know? And then I look at it, and this very shovel, this weekend, I went 72 miles an hour. And he's now the reigning champion in what is called the light modified division. And Strader set new speed records riding in the actual shovel down the Angel Fire slopes. That was a fast stop. All right, here we go. Dane coming down in Thor's hammer. The California kid rocketing. Gail Bowles, top of the course. Now, Thor's hammer, the California kid. Ross, Ross Anderson had him up on the mountain, uh, worked their skis over a little bit, and they just came down 79 miles an hour, 1509, I think it was. And Gail Bowles is getting ready to go here any second. Just waiting on his run. Gail Bowles, Odin's fire. The return, let's see if he can pull it off. Come on, Bolis. Burn it, dude. Burn it, dude. Here he comes, here he comes. All right, come on. On course.
Okay, a Rob Villalobo sled, their brand new one. Had a little controversy earlier. This sled uh, had a little DNF or a uh, false start. The racers believe they should have DNF'd him, but Angel Fire thought otherwise, and he's in third place, and he's about to make his run. So we're gonna see what happens. And he's on course. Nope, not fast enough, sorry. Don Adkins currently in second place. Rocketing down the hill. Let's see what he's got. Mark Desharnas, currently ranked number one after the first run. In the French Connection, coming down the course. He's coming very fast. I don't know what's going to happen. Wait, it's a, it's a tie for what, second? He tied for second with Gale. Ross Anderson is the Ross, man with the how man. many championships under your belt? <laughs> Four, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, Ross. Yeah. My man, Ross. Yeehaw. <laughs> All right. Man, the mid. All right. I, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> You are the man. Let's see if I can see. First of all, we got a crew in seven days on CBS Sunday Morning. Check it out. It's going to be aired on CBS Sunday Morning in a week. And then, I'm not sure, but on Friday nights at 7 p.m., the competition, and it's a great, great show, and A&E is going to be on. So let's give those TV crews and the folks from A&E a big hand. They busted their buns to give us some coverage. We also had a lot of local sponsors. We get a men's master's second place and $200, and they go to Pat, I can't pronounce his last name. B oh my God, it's my brother, Pat Burgess. All right, Pat. He's been a production and modified winner over the years. And uh, because they're punching around here, say something. Thanks to Angel Fire. This is a really great race. Thanks again. He's been racing here a few years, Bill. And uh, he finally entered that Masters division. And uh, bested some guys that have won this, well, several times. He's 400 bucks in cash. He had a time of 16.69. He's your men's master. First place goes to Jerry Cowan. the shirt. We talked about it all day long. This is the official Dummer shirt. Dummer Racing. Thank you, Angel Fire. Great party. Okay, we got the women's division now, Bill. Party on. She said she didn't quite have the right wax on, but she still caught the time of 17.78 seconds. She's going to get some optic nerve glasses and some other stuff here from Budweiser and a plaque and all sorts of cool stuff and a hundred bucks. Let's bring up Kelly Hockabo. event several times. Of course, you won it two or three times. We've talked about guys like Sam Wilson have won it several times. When it comes to women's production racing, there is only one name that makes it happen. She is a four-time winner. 
She's going to get contact binoculars from Budweiser. She's going to get a sport bag, Columbia Sportswear gift certificate. She had a time of 16.75. She's going to get 400 bucks. She is the fastest woman shovel racer in the world. Let's bring her up here, four-time winner, Kim. champion. He said he wasn't quite waxed right. He's going to get a hundred bucks. He had a time of 16.2 seconds. He's a two-time defending champion. Let's give Chad Denny a big hand. Third place, Chad Denny. For years, this guy has been shovel racing. For years, he's gotten second place. In 1989, he had the fastest run of the mountain until a guy came down and just barely beat him. He's devoted his life, his wife, most of his medical bills, but his entire inner self and outer self is all about shovel racing. Do you realize that he's also started a new category with the IRS for deductions? 7,000 a year to shovel development. That's right. Well, I'll tell you one thing, I know a lot of you have watched this guy race, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for this guy after he almost killed himself in Snow Summit. He came back, and he won his first production championship. He is the fastest man in the new millennium. He had a time that was better than everybody by about a half a second. He's going to get some binoculars. He's going to get gift certificates. He's going to get $400 cash. And he is the fastest man in the world on a production shovel. Let's bring him up from Albuquerque, New Mexico, John Carl Stern. shovel. We got kids riding shovels. We got people up there riding shovels. Anyone can ride shovels. You guys all will all come out and do this. It's the funnest thing in the world. Thank you, Angel Fire. Thank you, John. In the bag. Your check's in the bag, buddy. We have one prize for the unique division, Bill. And since, uh, you know, it's just a wild thing. This guy always wins. Tell me a little about how you voted on him. All right, we had, uh, in the unique division, they are shovel racing machines. They are modified, and no, it's not a unique division. It's unique division. There's, believe me, there's a difference. So, we had three entries. One was the ever-popular Agnes that used to be uh, Kermit Brown's motorcycle. Agnes, yeah. Agnes, quite frankly, came in third. In second, skis from Mountain Sports and 300 bucks. Trace Amigos, Gene Hunt. Gene Hunt, Mr. Unique himself. Probably 13, 14 times. 13, 14. You know, when it gets to be that big a number, you just kind of put it What's another five and six? Anyway, good job. Tell us real quick some of the things that the incarnations in the past have best been. Well, uh, let's see, that was the sled zeppelin a couple of years ago. Um, living room set, teriyaki chicken, water skiing. Yeah. 
got your idea? <laughs> that was the on the beach scene. So several different things. Two of the most memorable were, uh, well, the, the volcano, Mount Pinatubo or whatever it was, that had fusees up on top and spewing red flames. And of course it caught fire, but everybody thought that was part of the routine. And I, I think probably the other one was teriyaki chicken on a sesame seed bun with chips. That thing was about as tall as the ceiling in there, and it was a great big full-blown white leggard with its feet sticking out the front, a bun underneath it, one across the top, its head sticking out like the short stubby wings, and the chips were three guys named Chips that skied alongside. So, another great job. Congratulations. Let's give Gene on a big hand. Thanks, Gene. We'll go from there. All right, we had a new category this year. Could be the shortest lived category in the history of shovel racing. You know? It's called light modified. And uh, this guy is going to be real happy, I think. I would if you and I split it. He had a time of 16.49, and he was second place, and he's going to get a check for 750 bucks. Let's bring up Larry Haley, second place, second place. Those of you that have a newfound friend, he can't the check here, so forget it. <laughs> okay, well, I think this gentleman, uh, he had not raced in a modified machine since he almost wiped himself and the other racer off on the other course back at Snow Summit just two or three years ago. You know, once you take a fall like that and you compress vertebrae, you break bones, you lay up in the hospital for six months, few people can get back inside a modified, a super modified machine or a light modified machine and still race. Well, this gentleman did. He had a time of 1564, and he's gonna cop the first daily double for this weekend as the first light modified speed division, first place winner and a check for 1,500 bucks. Let's bring up John Strader. my wife who, if, if she didn't let me shovel race, I couldn't be here. So we love her. And of course, Butch Johansson, who builds speed shovels for a living, he built the dream. I knew what I wanted and he built it. I want to thank Tracy I just saw for giving me great room condos over at the Gold Creek. But I want to thank the man who I don't see right here now, my man way back there, Ross Anderson. Now let me tell you a little something about Ross. Ross is fast. Now Ross won some championships here too this weekend. And let me tell you about them. Kim Romero riding a Ross whacked shovel. Yes, baby. On production, I was riding a shovel waxed by Ross. My Live Modified was also waxed by Ross, and of course, Dane, who's coming up here in a minute, was also helped out by the Ross man. So he's a four-time world champion. He owns this mountain this weekend. And I want to thank these guys right here for being here every year. But of course, Angel Fire, thank you guys very, very, very much. Because this has been a long and arduous process to get here. But we really, really appreciate it, and we need you, and we love you. Thank you very much. Those that weigh just a touch under 500 pounds or thereabout. We've talked about him. His kid was up here getting an award. 
Don Atkins, the fastest shovel at the first and obviously last Winter X Games at Snow Summit, California. Don was bested, not by a lot, his time was 15.19. He came in fourth in the super modified speeds, Don Atkins. Good job. Okay. We have a tie for second and third today. You know, it just tells you that it, it's only one one hundredth of a second. Not even the blink of an eye can kick you from uh, second or third clear down to fifth. And uh, we have two guys who are going to split. Uh, Actually, they're going to get uh, pretty good money here. They both had a time of 15.12 seconds. They are going to uh, get a bunch of stuff from Budweiser. They're going to get some gift certificates. They're going to get, well, they're going to figure out who gets the plaque. I don't know. They're going to flip a coin to see who gets second and who gets third. I can white out that third and make them both two and a half. Excuse me, we got a timing problem. We don't have a clear course yet. Hold on a minute. Okay, we think we got it figured out now. We want to It's just a part of me trying to figure out how to give this stuff away. It's my first time around the block. Anyway, in third place, it's going to get a bunch of cool stuff from Budweiser. And uh, had a time of 15.12 seconds. Traveled all the way from uh, Washington. He's going to get 200 bucks. Let's bring up Brian Ares. Brian! There he is. Well, I'd just like to say how much fun this sport is and uh, how uh, we've really enjoyed it and uh, make this road trip from Seattle every year, and it certainly is worth it. And uh, thank Bud for all their cool shit. <laughs> and, uh, well, that just got you kicked off the AD yeah. show. Uh, this is great. I love this sport, and I hope it uh, continues. Maybe we can get it somewhere else, and uh, I love it. Okay, we had a tie for second place, so we're going to bring both these guys up. They, we're going to pay them both. You know, they both just blazed down the course in a time of 15.09. They're both going to get some uh, butt bags. They're going to get... Some other cool stuff, gift certificates, all sorts of things, and they tied for second with a time of 15.09. One of them traveled all the way from the Northwest. The other one, well, just traveled from over the pass. They're both going to get $625, and let's bring up the guys who tied for second place, just three one hundreds out of first. Let's bring up Cable Bowles and Mark Deshaunasee. Thank you for the beautiful racetrack you guys put together. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Winter Sports for helping us with our skis and R&D. Uh, in fact, uh, Rob is a big part of this. And I think he should be here uh, next to us too because he's it, it the one who made us do this. Uh, I want to thank, thanks to our friend Greg also who's been helping you tremendously with the sleds this year. Well, thank you everybody. Have a great time. All right, well done. Gail, scoot on over here. Next year. And I'm going to thank somebody now that I personally have never thanked before up here, and I've never heard anybody else thank them, but uh, Kurt and Karen Hanlon, without them, this shovel race wouldn't even be here right now. Thank you very much. I really like Kurt and Karen. You guys don't know how much they do for this sport. They love the sport, that's why they do it. And I just want to thank them. I'd also 
also like to thank my buddy Toby. We want me to get my chicks Harley Davidson sponsor. Anybody want a Harley? Go see Toby. And uh, John Cottam. He's got some great skis up there. Anyways, thanks you guys. And uh, glad to see a bunch of new blood up here. Thanks a lot, Gail. Was that correct? Maybe you're I cool, you're say cool. that. Hey, it's, it's just cable. That's okay. I'd like to say one thing here. I got to spend most of my time down at the bottom of the hill, or actually in the medium uh, next to the tent. And uh, I'd like to say that the two guys that did all the announcing today did a fantastic job. These two play off each other all day long. They keep the crowd going. They keep everybody happy. And they are in full control of what's going on in that course out there. Bill Burgess, Kurt Hanlon, we love you guys. I gotta get the smoke out of my ass here. Wait a minute. Thank you very much. Big lip Thank you very much. He had to say something. He's my nephew. Well, you know, this... We had a guy that uh, entered today, and frankly, after all those wonderful kudos, we didn't even get the right guy. Uh, we thought the owner was running the sled the first run down. Finally, somebody ran across the race course and said, Anthony Anaya's not the pilot, it's this guy. So... At least we got it right for the second run because it was the second run that uh, got him the dough. We, of course, asked who filled out the bio and they said, the pilot. He was obviously a bit nervous. That's right. But, you know, what all, <laughs> it's all well that ends well. He's going to get, you know, he's going to get 1500 bucks in cash. But, what he's going to get the most is he is the fastest modified speed racer in the world. play guitar and piano, did you? He rocked. Dave, first time you've ever been in the victory circle here for this race. Uh, I don't know, what was your secret up there? Oh, where's the man? Ross Anderson. Oh, there he is, right there. That is the man right there. I love that guy. So you say it was a wax race, and you also had a good shovel builder and a good sponsor over here, right? Sponsor, Gavilan Racing, all the way there. I want to thank John Strader, Butch Johansson, Ron Johansson, Bassett Metalworks, AM, Hughes Racing, every IFS member that's behind us. We need to pull together. Let's get this on whatever we have to do. Let's. I challenge everyone here to get another shovel racer to come next year and let's have a bigger race, make it better for Angel Fire, shovel racing. Kurt and Karen Hamlin, AFF, Angel Fire Resorts, A&E, everyone, let Ross ski. Yeah! Ross, thank you for us today. The Apache Nation is, is proud to be combined with the Gavilan. One more round of applause for all these shovel race winners from Little Scoots to Adults. Give them a big hand and they're going to be